Jailbreaking your PSP will let you play backup games right off the memory card. Convenient and opens up a whole new world of opportunity. I'll show you everything you need to do to get it done, coming up next. If you like original video content on restoring, repairing, and modding consoles and other great video game content, click the subscribe button now so you don't miss out on great new videos as they're published to the channel. Thanks so much! Jailbreaking a console always has its risks, but this one's pretty straightforward these days. This is not a difficult process like it might have used to have been in the past. I say go for it. Worst case scenario can be unbricked with a Pandora battery. Hi, my name is Blaine. I'm going to show you how to jailbreak a PlayStation 1000, 2000, 3000, or PS Go system. It's a pretty straightforward process. There's not a whole lot to it and I think you'll get tremendous value from jailbreaking your PSP console. I want to mention this is not for the PSP Street model, and I also think it's a good idea to format your memory card. Not only does it make room, it also sets up the folders like you'll need in order to get things going. Make sure you back up any important files first. Make sure you're on version 6.61 .6 of official firmware. Go to System, System Settings, and System Information. Yikes, this one's on 5.55. It hasn't had some love in a while, so it's going to need to be updated to version 6.61. Let me show you how that's done. The official firmware for PlayStation Portable Systems is available directly from the Sony website. That is the trusted source for this file and where I would recommend that you download it. I'm going to link it below in the description for you for easy access. Just go here, download the file, and save it for now. You're going to need the PSP jailbreak files, and I've put them on this Google Drive for you. Just go to the Google Drive and download this folder, and save it for now. I've also linked this in the description for your convenience. To install files to your PlayStation Portable, you'll need to connect it by USB. So plug in your USB cable to both ends, go to settings, come down to USB connection, and press the X button. It will connect your PlayStation Portable directly to your computer and mount it as a drive. You can also take the Memory Stick Pro Duo card out of the PSP and put it into a slot in your computer if you have one. But for the purposes here, it'll just be connected with the USB cable. While I'm demonstrating this on Mac, the concept's the same on PC. First, just want to show you that I'm using a 32 gigabyte genuine Sony Memory Stick Duo card, but you could also use a micro SD card with a Memory Stick Pro Duo adapter. At the top left is a window that has the eboot.psp file you downloaded directly from Sony and it contains the official 6.61 .61 firmware. At the bottom right is the memory card. So what you need to do is go into Game Folder and then create a folder inside game called update, all in capital letters. With the directory structure in place, grab the eboot.pbp file and put it into the update folder. Remember, don't let the fact that this is being done on a Mac throw you. It works exactly the same way on PC. We're just shuffling files around on a drive that's plugged into the USB port. Now that the file's in place, safely eject the PSP from your computer. And to disconnect on the PlayStation end, just hit the circle button. It'll take you back to the main menu. Slide over to Game, and then come down to Memory Stick. Then you'll see PSP Update 6.61, press X. That'll launch the updater. Once the update is launched, it's just a matter of pressing the buttons and following the instructions. 
keep hitting enters and accepts, it'll get you through the menus and get you started in the update process. With the update process complete, you'll need to restart your PlayStation by pressing X for enter. And also at this point you can delete the update off, but that won't be necessary. We're going to take a look at a different process coming up shortly. The PSP will restart, and you'll be updated to version 6.61 official firmware. Just to verify this, slide over to settings. System settings, then scroll all the way to the bottom and back up one to system information. That'll show you the version of official firmware you're on. And it's 6.61, so good to go so far. Reconnect your PSP to your computer by USB. Inside that folder you downloaded from the Google Drive, there's a PSP folder. Drag it and drop it right onto the root of your PSP's memory card. Make sure you replace the folder that's already there. Don't merge them yet, just replace them at this point. You need the folder that's come from the Google Drive to replace the one that's on your PSP memory card. Very important. Go back to your downloads. There's an OFW folder, double click it. Inside there you'll see a folder for PSP 1000 through 3000 and one for PSP Go. I'm sure at this point you know which one you have. So go into the appropriate folder and grab both the files that you find in there. You need to copy them over to this folder. So go to your PSP, click into the PSP folder, and the game folder. Inside you'll find a folder called Migger. You'll find an eboot.psp in there, just leave it. But copy those two files over that you got from your downloads and paste them right into this folder. Back to your Downloads folder. You'll need to pick a custom firmware to install on your PSP. Inside the scope of this tutorial, I'm using the Pro C2. It's required for PSP 1000, but for the scope of this tutorial, it would work for 2000, 3000, or the Go. Grab the folders from the PSP custom firmware of your choice and drag and drop them right on the root of your PSP card. But here's the thing, this time merge the PSP folders together. If you overwrite them, you'll lose all the work you just did in the previous step. Merge the PSP folders together, very important. With the files copied over, now you can safely eject the PSP from your computer. disconnect your PSP from the USB with the circle button. Then slide over to Games and Memory Card. You're going to see some new things here. You'll want to run Update. That's going to be the installer for the custom firmware that you've chosen. Once you see this screen, press X to start the custom firmware. You'll see a series of writing notifications that come up. Then press X to launch the custom firmware. Cool, custom firmware is running on the PSP. In theory, if you just wanted to have to go through the quick launcher process each time, you could just stop here and be done. But as you well know, we're in the business of doing things the best way possible on this channel. For your PSP, let's go ahead and put in a permanent custom firmware install that will be there even if you cold boot. So go down to Infinity Firmware Builder and press X.
Faced with the choice of building hybrid firmware or begging off of the process entirely, I'd say build the hybrid firmware. Press X. With the hybrid firmware built, you'll need to reconnect your PSP to your computer one last time. So slide back on over to settings, down to USB connection, and connect the two together. You just built a file with the builder, but it needs to be moved from one folder to another. So go into PSP, then go into game, then go into the maker folder. Inside the maker folder, you'll find data.mfc. That's the file you built. So copy that file, go back one level, then go into flasher folder and paste it right there. It'll take a moment to copy over. And once it's done, you'll be ready to roll. So at this point, you can close everything back out from the PC and safely eject the PSP. You are officially done transferring files. If your PSP has been powered off, you're gonna to need to relaunch the custom firmware with the quick launcher. So to do that, just slide over to games and down to memory card and run the fast recovery. It will quick launch the custom firmware for you and fire it back up in the memory. It's not permanently installed yet, so the custom firmware will not yet cold boot, but it's about to. With custom firmware running in memory again, go down to the flasher and press X. You'll see a single choice come up for start, press X. And you'll see the imaginary terms and conditions, press X to proceed through them. It's now permanently writing the flash to memory to make sure you don't have to keep loading it every time you cold boot your PSP. Press X to reboot your system. When you reboot your PSP, you're gonna get what looks like a blue screen of death. It's not a problem. It's supposed to happen. Just press X and proceed through the screen and it will continue on normally. This time when your PSP boots up, things are gonna look a little different. This time you see the initial setup screen and this is a good thing. So just go ahead and run through the initial setup and now you see a red screen, which means you're making progress and you're near the final steps. But here's what you need to do. Go ahead and run your custom firmware's installer again before proceeding forward. You're gonna see it with a blue screen here. Pay that no mind, it'll stay as a red screen. I just looped the footage because it didn't come out the first time that I recorded it. So run the custom firmware's installer again. Just like the last time, press X to install. And once it gets through all the notifications, press X to launch. Now that you're back at the menus, go to the custom firmware's fast recovery and press X that'll launch your custom firmware back into memory. Again, the screens don't change colors during this process. This was just a reuse of some footage. So at this point, you need to run the bootloader. So go back to memory card and run Infinity Bootloader. 
That is going to make it possible to load the custom firmware from cold boot every time you power off and power on your PSP. From Infinity Bootloader, scroll to the left. Here you'll pick LME or you'll pick the Pro C. Pick Pro by scrolling to it and pressing X. And you can scroll back over and just take a look if you want, make sure you got it right. Just press the home button and exit normally by pressing yes. That will force your custom firmware to be loaded and reload every time you boot your PSP, even if it's a cold boot. To demonstrate this, and also just to verify that you've got this put in right, press select and then scroll down to shut down and press X. That will shut the system completely down and require you to cold boot it from power off. The PSP is completely shut down. Now I'm going to power it back on with the power switch on the right to cold boot it. And watch what happens. The custom firmware loaded right up. You will no longer have to manually go in and fire up the custom firmware. This PSP is completely jailbroken, 100% auto loading the custom firmware. This project is actually complete at this point. However, I know you didn't come here just to figure out how to do the jailbreak. You want to load the games on this thing too. So I'm going to show you how it's done. To load a game on, you'll need a game that's in ISO format for a PSP game. I've got God of War right here for a demo. Connect your PSP back up by USB. What you'll need to do is drag and drop the ISO onto the PSP memory card. So grab it and put it under the ISO folder on the root of the PSP memory card. There's a folder on there called ISO, and that's where you want to put the game. Once you have the game ISO copied over, close out and eject the PSP safely from your computer. Then hit the circle button on the PSP to disconnect it entirely. Now slide over to games and down to memory card and check this out. There's God of War right there. It's ready to roll. You can now load games directly onto your PSP memory card and play them with no UMD required. This really is the main benefit to jailbreaking it in the first place. Not only can you back up your UMDs, you can play downloadable content right off the internet. This is job complete. Have a great time playing backed up games on your PSP. Thanks so much for watching this video. I hope it added value to your gaming experiences, and I hope you enjoyed watching it as much as I enjoyed making it for you. Don't forget to like and comment, and subscribe so you don't miss all of the new upcoming original content coming your way soon. Thanks so much. Look forward to seeing you in the next video.